Hi everyone, welcome to the second session of Dial M for Films. We are talking characters on screen today. If the story is the central nervous system of a narrative, then characters are the blood that run through its veins and pumps the heart. These are the people that we invest in. Uh, their motivations, decisions, morality or the lack of it is something that we discuss, dissect, talk about for months and years after we process the material on screen. Anand, Basanti, Gabbar, Gaitonde, Hatiram, Arya Stark, Crime Master Gogo, Nena, Ved, Murad. The list is endless and varied. Everyone who's plugged in today, I think, knows the actor extraordinaire that Parvati Thiruvoth is. And if you don't know her work, then this is the best introduction you can possibly get. I met Parvati three years ago at the Mumbai Film Festival. She was on our jury. Um, and since then, Parvati and I have had endless conversations about cinema. And in one of those conversations, she said to me that, Smriti, I uh, don't do anything on screen as Parvati. For me, it's always the character, even if I'm fixing my hair, it's the character fixing the hair. That somehow got lodged in my brain, you know, also because of the fact that I, I don't understand that at all. And uh, then very recently, when we started talking about putting a session together for Dial M for Films, this came up again, and here we are. Parvati calls herself an unapologetic method actor, and it's that method that she is going to let us into today. So over to you, Parvati, and welcome to this session. And thank you so much for taking out the time to do this. Thank you so much, Smriti and team at Mami for making this happen. What a rush. Like, I feel like, I mean, in the best way possible, I feel like I've just prepared for an exam. I know all the answers to, like, nerd alert. Like, you know, I feel like I am so, like, I was so ready to go on and start speaking about something that I'm so massively in love with. So thank you so much because I, I have genuinely benefited from actors, directors, creators speak about their processes. And I know every actor is different. There are people who do not wish to share their process, but I've always been like sort of like, I don't know, seeping it out, taking it in, you know? Uh, so I hope that this is a session that will be uh, helpful, if not helpful, engaging and amusing to some. So welcome everyone. Welcome to my creative brain and uh, the characters that I've had the fortune of playing. So to start off with, the first two movies that I did, um, I was 17, 18, and I wasn't quite able to find the right word or why is it that it felt like my calling, you know? And thanks to my incessant digging for people who would speak about their craft, like I soon found it, but I was not happy with how I was putting it. I was like, is it study of characters? Is it study of storytelling? You know, I just didn't know. And what is it what is this excitement and this very rewarding journey um that makes a two-dimensional character on page as real as another person right next to me of flesh and blood um so i kept looking for the word and then there it is the incomparable kate blanchard uh spoke in one of her interviews and she used the word anthropology and i was like bingo that's it i know it's a big word and i had to you know, find the definition. I had to go for a dictionary then. Just more. Uh, so I realized that by definition, it's like a scientific study of human beings, right? So here we have all the tools in our art form, right? In performance, all the tools that we can use for a creative study of human beings, their behavior in terms of their, you know, uh, in the backdrop of their socioeconomic political background or their bringing nature versus nurture, you know, you have it. So that's what, primarily excites me about the art of character building, so to speak, for the session. Um, and it's, it continues to fascinate me because in its execution, what it becomes is, it becomes everybody's. It's by far the loneliest and the most collaborative work that I've ever done. Like it's polar opposite in that sense and it's extremely gratifying. So like Smithy said in her uh, introduction, um, I am definitely, admittedly, an unapologetic method actor. And it's a very controversial thing to say, even in acting community, really, because uh, you're judged very harshly when you say your method. There's so many quotes and quotes going on. So um, there are a lot of ways that people have understood or misunderstood what method means. For me, it's very simple. It's just a range of 
skill set and learning techniques or training techniques that will help you put out a sincere performance. That's it. So it's just whatever it be for you. For if, if for you it means throw away the script, just go with the flow, that's a method too. So it just so happens that I am an information junkie. Like for me, it's a, all about like scribbling it down and writing it down and finding more things. And see, I'm not a born actor and I have no idea what that means. So I do, but have a certain aptitude for study and the study for human behavior, uh, psychology of human race, of storytelling. Um, and I feel like if I could acquire a certain skill set to sort of channel my natural inclinations of understanding of people and the instincts that I get, then I'd be able to give a better output. And it's not about me, right? Like at the end of the day, it's not about me. Uh, it's not, it's, it's, at the end of the day, it has to be primarily about the, what the audience's takeaway is. So I just have to find out what works best for me to give that output. Now it's a bonus and a very selfishly gratifying thing that I benefit a lot too, but that's my thing. And that's what I'm here to share, share with you, what I get out of it as well. So now this work has the ability to expand your emotional, your mental, to a good extent, your physical and your psychological boundaries. You know, it kind of reshuffles everything in your mind and sort of then when it falls, falls together again, you have a whole different landscape of understanding of self and others. And for me, empathy is something that I have over the period of the last 14 years, understood the biggest takeaway for me is from this job. And my method uh, really nourishes that journey for me. And uh, here we go to the nerd alert part. For the sake of brevity and for the sake of your understanding, I've taken the liberty to use a tool uh, using steel plates, really. I don't have a geometry box to make a chart. And I hope the team could put out the slide of what I've made. <laughs> Do not laugh, please be kind. Um, so this is something that I have made just so that I can explain how I, how I've broadly categorized the method that I go for. It's just over a period of 14 years that I figured this is what I usually do. It's not something I've read of one particular book or one particular technique. So as you can see in the middle, um, just one second, we have, in the middle, there's a circle that says script and director. The second concentric circle is self and research. And the third one is collaboration and execution. So I hope most of you are aware of this um, and the fact that in the making of a film, usually, again, broadly put, there are categories as pre-production, under-production, and post-production. And if you're lucky, you also have this one odd experience of uh, what I call a long gestative period uh, with a creator where you have no idea if the movie is going to get made, but you do go through a long gestative pre-production period where you're going on building characters. And um, that's an amazing experience too. And I've had that, but let's just talk about all the films that finally do make it. So the three circles that I've created here, the three categories apply in different tangible points uh, through the pre-production, through the under-production period, and through the post-production period. Um, so the first one is the script and the director. I'll come more to the director later, but for me, the first point of contact is always the script. Now, a director or a writer reaches out to me and gives me a narration or hands over the script to me. Um, it is the first hook that I look for or what speaks to me that I don't even have to go searching for is what is the dramatic need of the character in the film? Um, no other detail stands out. No other detail stays back after a narration for me, but what is the conflict? Like what is her inner conflict and how does the resolution get attached to the external conflict in the story itself? Like how does it, how does it fit into the script well? So once I've understood that, then there is time invested in reading and rereading the script as many times as possible. And whatever material your director or writer gives you. Uh, for the initial projects, I used to have a bound script given. Um, and eventually I started working with creators who would work with me in, in a way where there would be a synopsis or a one-line order given to me. And initially that kind of 
you know, I was a little, oh no, what, what do you mean? Do I have all these pages to go through? But then there was that leap of faith that you take with the creator when you know that you're on the same page about what is the essence of the story you're going to get and the actor has gotten it, then the creator kind of trusts you to be free himself or herself to create it as they go. So it becomes a self-evolving piece, this thing called script. Um, so then you build it along with the creator. I remember a, an interview that I had read, read again, like first two years of my being an actor, it was Nasruddin Shah's. I, I, I wonder if so ever remembers giving such an interview, but it had a great impact on me. Um, in that, he's mentioned how an artist must uh, earn the right to improvise. Like whatever their method is, there is a certain um, dedication or sort of focus you give to the script, to the core structure of the film. Um, so the more and more you read it, the more and more the truth and the essence of the script gets ingrained in your mind, um, then you kind of, you, then the character will lead you to the improvisation. You don't have to think of, hey, what is the smart thing to do in this? What would look cool? You know, things don't go out of the character anymore. Nothing stays just on the surface and everything comes from within. And that's a leap of faith too. So I end up, just deliciously gorging on the script or whatever material that I get. That's the first step. So the second one, as you can see, is self and research. Now self, like according to the script, you would also see what is your, what do you need to do with your physicality to change, to work on? Uh, what are some of the physical habits of your character? Like for example, there are certain fabrics that I'm used to as Parvati certain fabrics in your house, your bed sheet, something as simple and small, so to speak, as that makes a lot of difference for me when I work on a character. And I would like to know what kind of clothes does she wear and what is the fabric that she feels on her skin. Um, that helps me during the performance to sort of settle into a different space, which is not part of it. Um, then otherwise, you know, of course, there's a training if required, you have to take um, if the character looks a certain way or behaves a certain way because of their lifestyle or job or, you know, uh, if they're a dancer or an athlete. So you do that. That's one kind of research on self, like or training of self you got to do. Then the other one is a lot more texture, like who, what, when, and how's of it all, you know? There's no question here is wrong, is what I think. Uh, even the foolish ones, especially, because I, I personally feel the need to like flush it all out with the first wave of questions. Usually it's inflicted on the director or the writer, um, which they love, I have to say. But the socio-economic political background of the story um, and where the character fits is an extremely important research for me. Now, does all of that make it to the final execution? Not really. But for me, there is a certain kind of absorption that happens, which I can then trust to come to my aid when required. Also to say that there are these kind of things that you study and you stay in focus with. Um, I feel like sometimes the script doesn't talk about it. The, the performance or the performer doesn't speak about it but the audience gets it. Like it's very intangible. It's kind of this compound effect of everything that you chart out in a character uh, that finally comes out in a very organic way. You can feel it. And I felt that in performances when I've seen on screen is that there is something about this particular behavior of hers. It seems very clean. She wants to take that bottle and break it on that guy's head. Simple action, right? But there is something about the way in the performer has moved her hand this, you know, the swish of her wrist, that there's something off about it. Is that a hesitation? Then why did he, why did she hesitate? Then what is her dynamics with this guy? Or is it this guy at all that she has a hesitation with? Is it something in her past? Could be, could be something that I must have read um, or in her backstory, that's something she went through, an accident that probably affected her wrist. It could be even that, but that comes across magically despite whatever other preparation that you've made um, and the audience will get it. The collective experience will get it. So that is one, as much as research as you do, I've learned this the hard way. Do not cling to it because I've realized that staying loose with, with your research 
is what helps you grow and find these little magical dots. Um, I used to be like, I used to build walls. Okay, this is what my character would do and it will not go But not out of this line, you know. And obviously I could see my creators like really struggling with that because they would have wanted me to be a little more loose, a little more welcoming to changes and something that's unexpected, that's beyond the script even. So I learned that the hard way in the initial years and um, now I believe invest but not, don't clean. That's my motto. Um, and I, again, I put that into action through different movies and it's a trial and error method I keep learning. And uh, one, one aspect which is a which is not to do with something textual, is how I always look for a way how a character feels time. We all feel time, right? Like we relate time to instances and events and habits, tangible things like food or intangible things like memories, you know, right? Even a character's sexual appetite for that matter. Like, what is the orientation like? What are the experiences for the, of the character? Chart them out, you know. I chart them out and scribble and doodle and whatnot. And it eventually surfaces in ways where I get to apply it to how does this character speak to another, another character in the film? Maybe not the protagonist. It could be one of the, you know, one of the people in the crowd. How does that crowd inform her behavior? Uh, and all this kind of works in that. So how does, how do you chart out time for this character? It becomes a very important game for me. The third aspect of my wonderful diagram is collaboration. This is where the magic gets more and more real. This is where the lonely part gets chucked out and you have your whole team to come for your help, right? There is something beautiful in collaboration, which is the elasticity of it. You know, uh, and I seek this a lot from my my team. Like I feed off their energy. Uh, it's mostly that I feel that I'm sensitive to my director's voice, their energy, their moods. You know, um, and I try to have more and more conversations with them. But I realize that over a period of time on set, during any kind of collaboration, you need to have a thick and a thin skin. Um, it's very important to retain the focus on the character because there are too many things when you're thin skinned so that you can absorb everything. You also get affected by the noise around you. Like everybody is doing different things in their department and everybody, there's a lot to learn from every single department also. But if you're also not sort of treading the balance of thick and thin skin, you will be constantly blown away and you're absorbing everything that does not really feed your character well. So that's a little bit of a, a toughie. I can, I can probably speak about it when there is more of an example that I can, you know, put uh, for that to be put in perspective. Now, if I get a tough collaborator, like somebody who is not willing to share their energy or their space and their time, that still doesn't take away from where I find the collaboration. Like, how do you keep your motivation on, on set, like with collaboration? It might even be one of the people in different departments. It could be the art director. It could be my makeup artist with whom I might end up having my conversations with. Like, at the end of the day, you stay true to what the director wants and make that shot happen. Because no matter what your energy around is, that moment for the character is all that is real. What comes before, what comes after is like, see, this is something that if any of you have like talked or listened more about meditation, they say, this moment is all there is. It's something that we try to imbibe in our lives, right? Um, that's the same thing that I apply and I have learned over a period of years that when I am giving that one shot and if that's one scene, I block it out and I only focus on that. I try not to put that traffic in my mind key where does this come in the edit? How does, how will this scene? That's not my business. That's not an area that I try to expend my energy on. Now, let's say after backup, I want to have questions. I may ask my director, but in front of the camera, there is so many of these uh, lines drawn out. My line to the director, my line to the cameraman, my line to my makeup artist, the costume designer, the alankar part of the Abhinaya. Then there is, of course, the co-actors and the set department. 
So those are basically five broad categories that I would speak about. I mean, of course, there are the set boys, the light men, and everybody else that you converse with. But these would be the broad main categories. So I jump into the first one, which is the writer or director. Now these are the first creators, right? These are the first people that you meet and you engage with. Trust is a major factor for me. So when they give me something for me to shape shift. a great uh, space of trust and growth would really help me now i would love me a director who would speak as much as i do and like spend time um, you know wondering with the what about re what about this how about we do that that's wonderful and i have had the opportunity to work with such directors who have their own format and technique to work but with an actor they make sure they engage but i've also worked with certain others who have a certain solitude to their technique like they may not be able to um verbalize exactly what works on screen but they can only tell you once you perform and that is one other kind of experience altogether and unfortunately if you come across a director who is completely close then all i would say is good luck i have had to go through that also where um, all you do is just stay with your character your character is your best friend and like you know that's all that's that, that's your buddy there so i have done that as well where i felt like i have zero communication information and i've been considered a pain in the you know where for asking too many questions and then i you just sort of like okay they are not important nobody is important but the work at the end of the day is important because i would repeat this again at another point uh when it comes to the co-actors part of it is that at the end of the day when you're watching a movie uh or you've built a character you can't go ahead and put a subtitle that you know you had such and such issues on set at the end of the day the integrity of the character is all that you have to uphold and you do whatever it takes to do that so collaboration is a very interesting space so um on set uh, another aspect working with a director i find there are two kinds of directors that i find again broadly put okay one is somebody who would particularly enjoy bringing the actors on set before the shoot begins and ask them to have a go at it right a rehearsal you're not wearing the costumes the costume of the character you're not you've not even learned probably your lines probably got the scene just just then and the cameraman and everybody are just watching you perform and you're like this little toddler right stumbling across falling you don't know exactly where anything should go and then they would set up the camera accordingly and i i have i have really enjoyed that process in certain films and then there are other people would call you after the shot is entirely set and i have to tell you that is brilliant as well because there is that leap of faith like they know that you'll come and you will sort of settle into the space that they visually need to create and still not sort of stifle the character that you're playing so what i do a little hack that i found is that i always reach at least like 15 to 20 if not half an hour before my call time i do that because i go there and i loiter i loiter i get used to the energy i see them setting up shots it it makes me comfortable as long as i'm not sort of you know attacking their space uh that's what happens on set with the director in terms of building a character while a shot is being set that's the broad two categories then we have our makeup artists the costumers the hairdressers these are these are brilliant people like these are always like these are like my army or like my entourage they are always there to support my performance and conversations with makeup artists and costumers is one of the key aspect of pre production for me um i found that a lot, not a lot of people have, are used to speaking with actors or like thinking about what the character must be thinking while buying this color or what colors do they use but it really helps me whatever they can provide so even going shopping with them sometimes helps what are the what what are the kind of shops these characters frequent um this would come more in context when i you know speak about certain films uh where their collaboration with me is so key and so integral to what the output is which also you'll see the next would be and this is not in one particular order or anything but this is the cameraman and the focus pullers now the cameraman are your allies like i i remember starting uh, as an actor terrified of cameramen like if you don't stand on the mark and you're like already sweating buckets uh but then i realized that 
you know, you've got to trust them and you've got to seek help too, you know. And over a period of time, I would ask them to, why this light? I'd have a million questions which have no correlation to like building a character. But having more and more conversation with them has always helped me. Um, and focus pullers are amazing first audience for you. I have had the, you know, uh, had the opportunity to work with some amazing focus pullers who would be like, for the people who, with whom you do your rehearsal with. And soon after a particular shot is over, now I don't know what the audience at, in the theater are going to feel about the character, right? But some of them have been generous enough to communicate that that was on mark. Or if you see, and they're very simple people, they don't like go with like tough, acting jargons or anything. They just tell you whether it worked for them or not. So it's always great to get that kind of a feedback from them. And I look forward to that collaboration from them. Um, and then the next set would be the co-actors. Now co-actors, there are again like different kinds of directors, there are different kinds of co-actors. There are co-actors who are amazingly generous. Now it doesn't matter what school of acting they come from, whether they're method or not. What really helps is that they are willing to figure out something new. It's a jugal bandi of sorts. It's an amalgamation of all kinds of thought process coming. But you both are so committed to getting that shot right, truthful. Um, so those are my favorites. <laughs> and I hope that I'm such, a, such an actor too. The other kinds I've met and I've uh, worked with are ones who have certain techniques that require solitude, require a complete cutoff from other people. And I completely respect that as well. Because I don't know, maybe another project that I do, I may need that technique. So I really, as long as that doesn't interfere or completely ruin my performance, then there is a very healthy respect and space given to that actor. But the third and the final category, obviously, are the, the most unfortunate ones to work with are the ones who are selfish, who think it, this is an ego competition. So with whom you do not get a chance to build at all, you know, they think that it's a race and where you're like, you know, you're not reaching anywhere if you're not coming with me either. So then there are certain hacks that you find because at the end of the day, again, what I said earlier, you have to come back to making sure the integrity of your character and the performance stays intact. And this is where I said the Nasruddin Shah interview will come, make a comeback. That interview also said something which stuck with me and will stay with me for a very long time, thanks to the experiences that I've had. Um, if you get a great co-actor, good for you. I mean, this is not verbatim, but this is what he said. If you have a great co-actor, great for you. But if you have a really bad one, that is no excuse for you to mess it up. And that felt like a warning from a teacher, you know, like, I'm like, okay, I, I can't ever say that, you know, but that, that person did not like give me the cue. Not your problem. You still figure out, you've got a bag of tricks. It's like every research material and every other energy that you feed off, that you mark, it's like Hermione's bag. Like she's got the most bizarre things in there to come and help you. It's just that it's a tiny bag, but it's all there for you. So you just sort of go in and works take what works best for you. And of course, the last broad category I would mention is the set department. I crave to work more and more with the set department. They make the world that the characters inhibit, right? Like they make the room, the books, the bed, the everything. So sometimes if there's a purse that the character is using, a bag that the character is using, I sometimes go and ask and responsibly so if I can just live with that for a little while, like can I just feel the bag, see how the bag falls into the crevices of my body that it doesn't feel new when I go on set for the first time, so that it becomes part of my body. We all have that, right? Like we talk with our, the phone in our hand and there's a way we hold it. And um, if I am given a new phone because the character uses, let's say, Samsung, uh, I'll be holding it very, very weirdly. <laughs> so the time that the set department gives me with the items they build the world with has exponentially helped me in, in performing, in, in just settling into the character. So this is the third and the final circle that I spoke about in my diagram is the collaboration part of it, which brings me um, to something that I'm so grateful to share with you. These are going to be clips from the films that I've done. 
um, I've tried to select films which have which work well in terms of putting these things into into context. This process that I have told you into context, and maybe I can share a couple of anecdotes with you as well. Um, but before we go into it, the first movie I did was out of syllabus. The movie's name is out of syllabus, uh, and it released in two thousand six. And I went with the notion that acting is just be yourself. Just be yourself, learn the lines, just say it. And uh, if you guys ever do watch it, that, that, that'll be a great way to watch a terrible performance. Not to be harsh on myself, but that was, that was very amusing to watch it at, at some point. Like I have to say, it's all, all self-kindness and self-love, I would say this. And then I got to do my second film, Notebook. I don't know how many of you have seen this film, but I have selected a clip for you, um, which talks about the beginning of my realization of what character building really is. So that was my very first time working as an actor and engaging with a character and her story. Uh, we had this workshop before the shoot started and I remember the writers would like take turns spending time with each one of us and we were all selected from like a grand audition um, and spending time about our respective characters. So it was the first time uh, the question of why came across. Like, why does she do this? What is her story, her parents, her favorite toothpaste? What's her least favorite curry? And I remember sitting there slowly jaw dropping because here's a writer talking about a character as if he's talking about me. Like, fascinating that this two-dimensional character suddenly became very real. And I remember saying, according to the story, um, there is a decision that this character makes and that has a great impact in the story. And I said, you know, if I was in her place, I would never have done that. Now, this brought me close to the core internal conflict of this character. Now, externally, we know what the storyline is. This is what happens, this is what this person did, and hence the climax. But what drove her to it? And as an audience, I would say that I would have never done that. That's such a wrong decision, right? And the writer asked me, um, are you sure you would not have done that if you hadn't gone through uh, what you went through? Like, if you hadn't gone through what Pooja went through? Uh, if you had gone through every single conflict and issues and obstacles in her life and her backstory revealed that, don't you think you would have done exactly the same? And that was the first time I realized what this job suddenly shifts perspective, right? It's way beyond putting yourself in another person's shoes. It's understanding that judge judgment always brings up walls. And especially as an actor, for me, I need to now find out reasons that makes her actions justified. And what exactly is justification, right? Like everything is justified according to us, what we do. So for Pooja Krishna, what she did was right. Like she didn't know any better. So suddenly it changed for me, it shifted. And this particular clip that you see, it's a minor little moment. That was the first time that I experienced what in execution it feels like to be her and not Parvati because Sarah's character says that we could tell your mother about the situation and there is a slight bit of hesitation that Pooja takes and says, um, if I, it, well, what would she do? She would do the same thing, right? And that's what changes the entire game in the movie. And that's a lie. That's a manipulation that she did right there. And she knows that her friends are not going to question her because, you know, the, her character is a leader in the film, you know. So whatever she says, everyone, like her best friends are going to believe. And suddenly she didn't feel like a bad person to me anymore. I'm, I'm not judging her. It feel, felt right that she was doing that. So there, the perspective shifted. I'm not on the outside, I'm on the inside. And I remember sitting there thinking, oh, oh. Oh, why am I, I mean, it's not about me liking her, but this is interesting. This is new. And that was just the beginning for me. And in terms of collaboration, I want to tell you that if you see that, if you see the movie and in the clip, there's a part where Sri Devi's character gets up and walks away and Sarah and Pooja are just turned around and looking at her. I was so petrified to move 
a little more to see her properly because I was given a mark and I needed to stay right there. And when I watched this again today, I was like, uh, yeah, I remember how stuck I was physically. But this definitely, Notebook was a film that, that introduced me to the expanse that is character building. Let's move on to the next one. The next movie that I did is my first Tamil film. Soon after a uh, notebook, actually, uh, it's a movie called Pooh, Flower. Um, if I can have the slide of the character. Here you see Mari. We are not going to play a clip from the film, but let's talk a little about Mari. Now, Mari has... Like, Mari is a very non-relatable, like, very unrelatable character for me. When I was auditioned for her, uh, for, for this character, I have I had never met anyone like her. I had never seen anyone like her in, her in my life. Like, her backdrop, her backstory, where she's from, what her job is, nada, nothing. So, Shashi sir, my director, uh, who wrote the script based on a short story uh, called Velo de Pui, um used to read out the story to me. And at that point, I didn't even understand Tamil. So language was another thing that I needed to focus on. So the prep really meant going to her, her, her uh, native place, her, the, where she lives, going to the, her workplace. Um, like she works in a firecracker industry, like in a factory where they make firecrackers. And there was a particular way that they, they tie the firecrackers, the long ones, and the, the hands move in some fast forward while they speak in normal speed. And it took a long time to like learn that. But in learning that, it was not just a skill to show in front of the camera. It was also the thing that I said before about how does Mari spend her time? What is time for her? So sitting there, making this for hours, talking to your friends, having your lunch, coming back and making it again. She is sending, um, she's, she's spending all the time. This is the majority of her time spent here. So there's more and more of departure from Parvati and her background noise and everything. And I could be more in Mari's world. Started listening to the music that she would uh, listen to. Started imitating Tamil at that point. This is a movie where I had to dub. Uh, thankfully, you know, I, I could pull it off. Um, but language was definitely a major issue. And whenever I felt a little out of sync, uh, Shashi sir would just come and read the short story to me. Now, it doesn't matter if I understood what exactly the short story was in, 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 in terms of the language. It's the feel with which Shashi sir always brought me back to the essence of Mari. There's also something very interesting about the character building of Mari is that now here's a girl who is head over heels in love with her cousin. From a very young age, she believes that this is the guy she's going to get married to. But when the movie begins, you see that she's married to someone else and happily so. Now she somehow has compartmentalized her life where her love for this man meant that he needs to be happy. Now acquiring him and possessing him, no. Not my problem. Is he happy there? Good for me. Then I can move on too. Now, the journey and the arc then became how she realizes that even her departure from the space did not provide, you know, her loved one a happy life. And that breaks her. And we leave the movie at a space where we don't know how happy Mari is going to be anymore. And uh, it was a great character building exercise for me because... Shashi sir and I had a conversation at one point. We was like, what happens after the climax? Does she go back and actually make peace with the situation and be happy? Or will she leave her husband? So suddenly, like, again, Mari is not a two-dimensional character anymore. She's as real as me as, like, asking about a friend. What did she do about that? I just wanted to come in a little bit here because, uh, you know, when we were speaking about this earlier, and so interesting when you speak about, uh, you know, you speak about Notebook and you speak about Mari uh, in Pooh. Uh, you know, the thing is that the larger, um, the larger umbrella that possibly these characters come in and therefore, uh, you know, um, therefore there was such an effort that went into kind of creating their worlds is because they were so different uh, from you. So, yeah. so uh, to, to kind of like, you know, of course, there are many examples that you have for, uh, for us today. But just uh, in terms of an overview that when you get a script, 
uh, and you get a character that you get attracted to uh, and uh, this character uh, you have no reference point for this character in your life you know you're not like this character you you, you feel a uh, emotional distance from the character because this character is very far removed from you this character also is not somebody who inhabits your environment so when you're building this like in a generic sort of a way when you're building these characters what are the tools that you use uh, to kind of construct their reality right so um this is uh, especially with regards to poo and we can actually move over to the next one which is city of god which is a malayalam film i did which has the same thing like i've never met maradagam um there you have it that is maradagam and i've never seen her or interacted with a character like that so the initial setup is always about going and be in that like just go and be in that space understand what their space is like where do they live for example with maradagam the first thing that the writer um uh, advised me to do was at 6 o'clock in the morning these are people who have come from tamil nadu and settled in cochin and they're construction workers they all get up in the morning at like 5:30 6 they have oiled their hair wash it up put flowers and have like a tiny little lunch box and they're ready waiting for the you know vehicle to come and take them to the site so the first thing i did was to go and witness what their movement really is like and if i get an opportunity to meet somebody and have a conversation with them spend time with them that's one major aspect that and that's what i did in poo with shashi sir definitely um he uh, facilitated that for me right i could go there uh, live with them actually make food with them in that house a house which which is see also it's about a relation to space like i am used to with because my privilege living in a two bedroom three bedroom house and here they are in a one room which is cut into kitchen bedroom and living and but there's a way they have maximized the space and they they have owned each nook and corner to sort of benefit them like or work for them for practical purposes and you know suddenly it's like when mari is reaching out for this one tawa so to speak i should know where it is i should know what my relation to that space is instinctively it's not something after sitting in front of the camera that i'll be like wo kahan rakhegi or oh this is this is um, easier for me to just pick it up from here out of out of the frame so it always helps me to go to the place where they live in interact with people who are similar to them read literature about them if possible listen to music that they would have listened to like what is the sound culture that they're used to uh, because if i listen to let's say malayalam songs and english songs and hindi songs and i've never listened to old tamil songs which they jam to you know what's their idea of going to a festival so i needed to know what are their quirks and then the more and more you pick these details and you put it in that hermione bag i don't know what is called i should ask a pot ahead uh that I really comes the parvati bag i think it's the parvati let's bag let's change it let's just change it thank you so that's the same thing that worked for a uh, city of god as well now there's another kind of you know what i would call i can't relate at all kind of a backdrop one that is of course far removed physically culturally culturally from who i am but also in terms of a fantasy that the director brings in and that brings me to the next which is marian which is the tamil film that i did and that's from a song in marian called ninjer and uh, this is interesting because see there is an idea of love and its power to feed the resolve of someone to survive you know some survive death you know uh so th- that's an idea that uh, bharat bala the director had come with and uh, the it was a very indulgent uh, script in that sense um and i could have go- i did the same routine right i i went to the place where a character like pani malar would live what are the kind of clothes they could wear what are the kinds of um you know activities that they do what's her job uh, whom does she live with all of that was done but then it was taken you know then it was taken like a notch higher like a, a notch like away from the regular understanding of a character it was that this is the quirk of the character as i could put it maybe for simplicity would be that she is a big fan of the movies and she really knows that she's pretty and she knows that she's sexy <laughs> and she she owns it up 
it's there in her ada in her swag and she's madly in love with marian and she is being constantly pursuing him for the longest time telling you like you can you can be anywhere but in the end we are going to end up together i'm pretty sure about that and there's a certain way that she invites that now whether for a particular look or in effect i wouldn't know for a aesthetic panimala doesn't really resemble any other fisher woman in that space she has straight hair it's like you know slick back tied behind she wears like big flowers here she has extra coal and she has deep neck not usual to see anybody like that like this definitely is a stand alone character and then my job would then be to build the character in its execution in its performance or in the feeling and the emotions of it to make her as relatable as possible along with this along with the vision uh that the director wishes to bring um now i remember you know that this is the place where like directors do like different things they give you the script but they can also give you things like bits of music and um, it was amazing because it was ar rahman who did the music for this one and there is a song called uh, natural avalirandal and the basic music bit was shared with the team before the shoot even started and uh, i remember the essence of what their love is and their separation is was constantly meditated upon after i got this piece of music um so that's about marian and where i could say that there are embellishments and aesthetic choices made um along with the reality of a character wherever the backdrop or the back story takes you that's another kind of a uh, sort of intricate um, weaving that you have to do when you build it during execution we can move on to the next one and this one also has an element of fantasy going with that theme is charlie and some malayalam film that i did called charlie uh so tessa meet tessa for this one now tessa has wings under her feet people like her internal conflict in the film is that she cannot and does not want to stay still she doesn't want to stay put and um her she's left her job uh, she doesn't have any intention of settling down <laughs> marriage you know and she just wants to be on the move and obviously her family has great issues with that and except her grandmother nobody else approves and i want to take you to um an experience with the director uh, when he came to meet me martin prakart and this is also to say that what kind of a collaboration you know worked well there now here's a director who came with the script and read out the entire script and told me uh, very sweetly like please don't ask me questions and i was like well, i don't know where to take my questions <laughs> he's like i don't know i'll give you my writer's number i just know i just know how to show okay and you know i worked with martin uh, prakat before also for photo shoots and all and i i found that extremely adorable and i was like it's okay but i was like but why does charlie go but why does tessa go behind charlie i i don't get it you know this was the first meeting okay and um, he just couldn't find the right words and he did something so interesting he took we were in a hotel room and he took a small little bottle of bisleri water bottle which is 500 ml and there was a bigger one almost finished but a bigger one liter one and he just put them on the table and said the 500 ml is char uh, is tessa okay and the one liter is charlie 500 ml wants to become the one liter simple i don't need any more explanation from this director i got the point and i know now in the most interesting way that this is what drives her forward now how tessa's internal conflict relates to her search for charlie is shown in the film how does her behavior change with each person that she meets along the way how that changes her dynamic changes um was also mapped out along with the team um so coming to the third cycle of uh, the diagram that i had shown is the collaborative part of it um the costume department had a lot to do with bringing a certain element of fantasy to who tessa is now tessa we can all kind of relate to the vagamod nature i mean i definitely do a lot of people have mistaken that maybe tessa is exactly like me not but um what happens here is that kerala is not exactly a layer weather kind of a place like it's not some a place where we like wear like three four layers and that works for us but we still went ahead using different layers for the character 
And that adds an element of flight in every movement of hers, along with Charlie, as you can see, there's an element of flight applied through costumes. And uh, before the first shot was taken and we did a couple of rehearsals, something felt really missing. And Samira Sanish, who's the uh, costume designer, I remember she came and she said, you know, what do you think of a, a nose pin? And I said, sure, let's try something on. And we tried a lot of them on and nothing really seemed to make an effort, uh, so, sorry, a, a difference. Um, and then she said, I have this broken button with me. If you want to just stick that on your nose and see, and there you see it, guys, that's a broken button from a shirt on my nose there. That's not a nose pin. And uh, then, then we had to like keep it safe because we can't lose this, you know, oh, Parvati is sweating, bring the glue, you know. <laughs> so it was very interesting. This is again, how different departments add to the final touches of who the character is. And like, I'm wearing extensions there. I had short hair at the time. And again, to add to the element of flight and waviness and the, see, it was a very visually indulgent film as well. And beautifully so, you know, the art director, Jay, created a whole world of installation art for Charlie and Tessa just kind of fits into that. She just gets that grammar and that was an interesting character to create in terms of how to again sort of weave uh, fantasy elements into a character while staying relatable. I just wanted to ask you because it's uh, you know you're you're kind of like breaking it down in such a beautiful way. Uh, I just wanted to know that when you're creating uh, characters um, that are someone's imagination, right? Yeah. My point is there could be a character like in Marian you said that you know you you are this character but the the reason the character looks really different is because we are seeing it from Danush's character's point of view, right? Mm. So when you are actually uh, a, a fantasy in terms of someone, when you're viewed through someone's eyes, um, how do you um, collaborate with the director and with that actor who has processed you and would like to see you that way to create this? Because this is actually not something, I mean, you can build on this, but it's actually, you need to get inside another head to, you know, to kind of yeah. imbibe. So can you tell us a little bit about that when you're talking about fantasy characters? Um, so it's about, uh, see, especially in terms of, since we've just spoken about Charlie, um, Charlie is a project where like, again, Martin Prakart had the, uh, this Charlie is about Charlie, right? Like the, the protagonist is someone who is kind of a philosophy in life. Like he is an idea, an attitude um, that is extremely something that like, it's very aspirational. So I try to connect first with the director or the writer's core philosophy behind creating that character. Like more than, my, because my search, my dramatic need in the movies to find this character. So unless and until... I become the 500 ml where I realize what are my shortcomings? Got what it. makes me not a Charlie? Why is Tessa a Tessa? And why does she, you know, need to admire a Charlie to get to that space? So all the questions which were then directed to the writer, not Martin Prakart, <laughs> um, Unniar uh, was happily sitting and over Chai, we would just continuously talk about what freedom means. What does flight mean? What does bondage uh, or like shackling down mean for different people, for everybody, not just Charlie and Tessa? And what this does is we kind of figure out where we are on the same page and where we are not. Like there could be moments when I'm reading the screenplay and I would say that like, in, like why is she doing this though? I get the point. I know that she needs to go there. I know that the script needs to move forward too. I'm sure that this is a tool that you're using to tell a story, but I have to perform this. But how do I justify her doing this? What makes her so desperate to do that? And those discussions is how I reach out and like sort of gnaw into their heads and get my answers. And there are also times I have to say, when I do not get an answer that is, let's say, um, satisfactory for me. And that wouldn't matter anymore because that's the leap of faith I take because I have chosen the team now. When they give me that answer, now for me, it's about internalizing that answer, even if it doesn't really make sense to me at that moment. Because again, bringing me back, uh, bringing back to that point of staying true to the moment for that character and putting that truthful shot out is what matters the most. So sometimes it really helps for me to just take that leap of faith. And that shows too, that takes away. And I've said this before, if I try and lie and pretend in front of the camera, it'll really show. 
so if I don't trust the director, that that will show. I have seen it. I don't know if everybody has. That. So that's that's the way I keep poking in. For me, it's always the questions that help me, and. Uh, I've I've more often than not gotten the answers that I that has helped me achieve that. I hope that answers your question, babe. Right? Yes, it does. Uh, it does. <laughs> so let's go on to take off. Now, um, this is Samira, and uh, this is a woman whose life. And this is the first idea of story that was discussed uh, with the director and the writer Mahesh Narayan. Was that it's a woman whose life is charted out and mapped out based on the men in her life. Now, how she comes out of it and what her core conflict is. Like our initial discussion in terms of character building, at the time she was, I don't even know if she was named yet, but this is a woman who was born into a family. Now she's a daughter, and she's taught to. you know she she takes a professional course and she becomes a nurse and now the next thing is for her to pay off the loan for that so there is that responsibility she gets married off as expected uh, then she has a child as expected now she has to come back and then she becomes the ex wife and she has the responsibilities of that then she has to make more money for that she has to get married again so then the she becomes a wife again and then she becomes pregnant again and then there is this whole new dynamic with her son from the previous marriage as to what will she say how answerable is she really to even the son from her previous marriage now samira is caught in a web of problems this is not a, a character that you see smile and that was very interesting even during shoot is that i spent days being samira where everything every second spent for her every waking moment is about how will i fix this issue how will i get this done how will i do that and she's not pitying herself she's not on that path of but she's just very focused on um, resolving her issues and she do whatever it takes um so that became the starting point and the aspect of her being a nurse and then what happens in the latter half of the film and the conflict which then ties up really well to you know how she is how do you call it how she is uh, liberated from this nature of being ans- answerable to her son even um that was charted out later on in the script uh and that's when the collaboration form again comes in where working with mahesh the director who's also an editor so there is incredible clarity and precision in which he would communicate what we need to say in this particular shot in this particular scene um and sanu the cameraman uh, who is like this invisible ally for you like the camera can be anywhere and the freedom given to you is like you do what you have to do i'll catch it that's my job and that was a very interesting way to collaborate with the cameraman too because it was very very freeing for an actor to move around and by this time um in whatever i've studied in character building i'd gotten to a point where the questions were less asked on set it was mostly all done and dusted mostly done and dusted way before we start shoot and it's only when i have i reach like a you know um uh, i hit a wall that then i request for that time off even if the shot is set and so generally generously given uh, in this particular movie um where i can go and sit aside and discuss what my insecurity in performance is like where i may feel i i fail and trust me there are so many insecurities galore that comes because you may know everything you may know all the back story you may know everything but in that moment it's something beyond your control really what comes out and what is not you may be thinking everything feeling everything but it doesn't reflect so i've had certain such moments in take off by being samira uh, as it's hosting as it was physically um but emotionally i found through her journey through creating that arc for her the strength always came to the fore so there was that decision right like no matter what she goes through at the end it's the decision maker in her that we 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 get to see at the end of each sequence uh, the problem solver that we get to see so that was the building of samira again costume makeup collaboration was um, amazing dhanya the costumer and i would go to uh, shops and she would bring me uh, materials and um, you know the churidar materials that they would use um, those are things that would eventually help me sort of forget i mean also understand their um 
economical background. It's so important to know what what are the things that she has and she doesn't, what irks her and what makes her angry and um, unsatisfied. So that's Takeoff. And that's again a fictional character based on real incidents, as the movie uh, says. Uh, but again, creating Samira came from a space of a, a, a fictional idea of what a woman's uh, conflict is. And uh, moving on, this is a character that I would say is relatable. Now let's come into spaces where Again, relatable is a broad, like general, you know, stroke here. Um, Kareep Kareep Single is a movie I got a chance to play in Hindi. Tanuja Chandra directed it. Uh, and Jaya, uh, <laughs> there she is. Uh, Jaya's journey was interestingly highly relatable to me. And to be honest, it's the most relatable characters that I've heard from the audience as well. Um, I had the fortune of collaborating with Tanuja and Ghazal from the get-go through the script. I remember they came and met me and it was a full an hour, two hour long narration and I remember sitting and laughing. Not like laughing at Jaya or, or you know, a yogi, but the, the idea that these moments are so light and yet there is so much depth in their reality, so relatable that there's no way I pounced on it and I needed, I had to play Jaya. Uh, working with Tanuja, the constant reminding, um, apart from many other things, was to always understand what her backstory really is. And if could have played a clip, and for people who've seen the film, the first five to ten minutes in the film is setting up where Jaya belongs, what her job is, where she lives, who are the people in her life. And that was enough, in fact, for me to work on for the rest of the film. Now, the events happen in the rest of the film for the character to form an, form an arc and resolve her problem. Or what is her problem? Her problem is what's next in life. She was widowed at the age of 22, 23. Then in, instead of focusing on her, she immediately ended up spending her entire grief into a focus on her brother and on her family. Now, her brother has moved away to the U.S. to study. Now, she doesn't have a project anymore. So now there is no distraction. She has to now focus on herself. And that's equally liberating and irritating for her. Um, and it's a grief that she hasn't found closure yet with. The loss of her husband is not something that she has dealt with. She's dealt with in a way that she's held it close. And that's not a space where anybody else can come and take away and that's, that comes, that sprouts from fear as well. Uh, but at the same time, you see these women all around. Like I, I personally would say I'm also someone like that. I mean, I have my strong suits. Like you never know what's going on behind. What are my insecurities? What are the things that drives me to make certain decisions, which may seem very unreasonable? Uh, she goes on this trip with Yogi. Why? Exactly. Like you will never be able to uh, like logically like argue key. One plus one equals two. That's why we all do these things. So these conversations were heavy and very well-intentioned and uh, well done during the course of the film. An incredible team uh, uh, with my cinematographer, Ishit, and costume department, Maria, where you can see again, like there is a certain aesthetic to Jaya that she prefers. and But at the same time, it's not something that you see like, yeah, she's not wearing Dolce & Gabbana. She works in an insurance company. She's not going to wear a Dolce & Gabbana belt. Like, there's a sudden, like, relation. is like, oh, Max se kari da hoga. You know, like, that kind of a thing. And uh, obviously, Ishit is another cinematographer that I work where they closely work with the direction and the production team and um, gives as much space for the character and the actor to breathe for them to do and like branch out in any different ways that you want. Um, and Irfan Khan, uh, the co-actor, of course, I mean, with, with whom I could keep churning the script into, you know, better butter, you know, just keep going on at it. And uh, that definitely helped stay with the focus of what her inner conflict is and never forget that trait. And then let the events that affect Jaya organically affect the performance. Like I had, like, this is one other performance where you don't like chart out. I mean, I never chart out expressions, but you don't chart out the shock. You don't chart out the annoyance. You, it happens to her for the first time. And in relation to her past, 
it all sort of organically flows you know so that's what happened with kareeb kareeb single um uh, you know parvati another thing i wanted to ask you is that because this process is so involved you know yeah. uh giving uh you know first of all you said that of course inhabiting the space that you want to get familiar with because you want to get uh, familiar with the space that the character lives in then yeah. understanding yeah. the inner world of the character by having a chat with the collaborators the people who created it and then layering it accordingly you know where yeah. you start to understand what the motivations are you start to understand where she comes from uh, mm. what she does and this is beyond the collaborators also contributing to it and then all of you building a world yeah. and building everything around it now what i want to know is that this is such a immersive process right you're creating a body language of a character whereas whenever you get out of that character i don't even know what that means you have to go back to the body language of parvati yeah right like yeah. parvati is holding one particular kind of phone or parvati has a certain kind of bag she knows where the chai ka patti is kept in her kitchen but the yeah. thing is she's familiarizing herself with all of this when she is creating this character first of all how does the separation in real life come um between you and this character and the second and the second aspect of that is what if you are doing two films at the same time then there are three people in your head that that uh, that that is tricky which is why i avoided doing that for i think 13 years or the 14 years that i have worked which is the last year i would say uh, i never do two movies at a time smriti i mean i think i'll implode if i do that i don't have what it takes to do two films at a time i don't know how to be with i mean with one character itself is like pretty much a relationship so like I, i don't know but you know the closest i've gotten to i'm answering the second part of your question first to so that it makes sense when i answer the first um virus uyare and vartamanam a movie that has not released yet these are three films that was shot back to back and i'll tell in detail how the even preparation got affected or worked eventually in 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 uh, the character's favor i remember after uyare was fine it was just one movie at a time and within two days i moved to virus and then i was dr anu and then i was dr anu for about a month month and a half and then immediately it was about 10 15 days later it was you know a fiza and um, i think by may or june by the end of like last year i i i just always go through this even after one movie is done that i do need a break for like 3 to 4 months and i think i benefit as much as the preparation time as the you know un you know undoing of it like when i reach home and then there is this vegetating period that i i mean it's not like everyone can afford to do that not every actor can afford to do that sometimes even i had not been able to afford to do that but you know what happens is that i don't really get the entirety of the experience if i don't do it if i keep sponging up and then i don't bring it out then i don't know what is left from the character from that experience in me i don't get an objective sense of it or a subjective sense of it even so i make sure that there is a break in between and i'm always very nervous if two films are shot very close together not because i'm scared ki parvati may come to the surface or the other character may come to the surface i mean i i will work hard not to make that happen but the noise in my head eventually does wear me down i mean personally for me that has been an issue um i have seen actors do it like left right center doing five films at a time and i I'm like that's incredible brain capacity that I do not have so that's the second part of your question the first thing is how do i do it is usually this break and uh, there is a lot of preparation that i've done in writing and what happens often is that the full undoing or the finishing of letting go of a character happens maybe a year or two later you know i i haven't spoken about this movie yet or i will speak eventually this is a, couple of films in, but i've spoken about samira so i can say that uh samira's character has a certain strength that i i think i learned from when i had to go through an attack an abuse eventually in my personal life and i feel like all these characters by being in their space and uh you know just going through that and understanding them justifying what their actions are and then 
it leaves a very indelible mark in you uh, to to that route that character has taken she becomes a friend of yours who's so informed in these things that that comes and sort of whispers like so to speak like right to say that you can't give up i could not afford to give up why you why do you think you could give up now this is all personal takeaways for me and these takeaways only really happen if i give that breathing space after so i i take that time out and brings and me to actually if two yeah. of your most successful performances which you've done which is which is uire and vibe uire and vibe and it brings me to uire again again another very incredibly relatable girl pallavi i mean even though i would say that pallavi is not a character when i uh, heard about her first from the first um, like it was a phone call really and said this one line of the of the story and the character and i immediately said yes um because i worked with the writers before uh, bobby sanjay a notebook who gave me puja krishna and uh, the the director manu uh, was um, associated with rajesh pillai who was a dear friend of mine who passed away and uh, we had immense faith in this project because as you can see pallavi is someone who is representative of and they're just fictionally speaking like she's someone who goes through an abusive relationship and while she chooses to walk out of it uh, is attacked for having chosen her freedom um and it's incredible while making the film obviously we did everything that i have spoken about right like we've we've tried to figure out where she was born her socio economical political spaces uh, her costume prosthetic makeup all of that but what we weren't prepared was when the movie released and people started relating to it that it's not just it's not only acid attack that this book about this book about general abuse and the overcoming of it and coming into being an individual that really spoke to not just women really to a lot of people who've gone through abuse and for me i think pallavi again um, came at at a time where i was picking up pieces uh, and and figuring out how to put myself together uh, to be strong enough to continue you know, on on my what they call war path but the path that i can't avoid like because that's my truth and uh, we had incredible discussions about this in this uh, during this film with the writer and the director mostly it was about the relationship with govind now the uh, relationship with gobind is toxic from the get go we can see that he's someone who continuously needs to control every aspect of her being um and calls that love and she had been uh, feeding that for a very long time and we touch upon the aspect that when a girl like pallavi um and whoever can relate um is helped out at a very you know pivotal point in their life in their adolescence they almost feel like they're obligated to stay with someone now they have helped me once and i wouldn't have been here if not for them so let me stay and it's not just pallavi we've all in one way or the other may have come across or gone through a relationship or a friendship which is toxic like that um so there were a lot of interesting discussions about that in terms of writing um dialogues uh would she say this would a person like her say it what is a fear what is the fear that allows her to continue with this toxicity those are all very brilliantly charted out and um i i was um, excited about this one particular scene before shoot where the attackers govind's uh, father comes and meets pallavi's father and says that you know if if you don't drop the case i'm going to lose my son you know my son is going to lose his future and you know goes on very very sincerely and uh, pallavi comes back home from this class that she was trying out and initially the very initial draft there were a few lines written and then we kind of figured out like in a group discussion we were all like what if she doesn't say anything what if she just comes and sits because she's exhausted like how about we use the tool of silence instead of dialogues here would that speak and you obviously could add dialogues if it didn't work after the performance but it worked out well for everyone uh, for the creators and for me during performance that the anger and the resolve and uh, and of what she's lost is just revealed through an action so those creative uh, decisions when made together with the director and the writer are very exciting for me um so that's what happened with uire and uire again had a, a, a another aspect with the director is that 
very quickly. The day before we started shooting, we were walking the corridor of the hotel where we did our prosthetic makeup. And I'm like, okay, Manu, I'll see you tomorrow. And then some aspect of some scene was shown and uh, uh, was discussed. And uh, he said something that made me realize that, oh my God, this is so not how I've understood Pallavi. And I freaked out. I was like, wait a second, are you, are you mean to say that she said this to Govind because she wants to? Because I, I thought she never really wanted to, but she was like managing him. And he's like, wait a second, how did you understand that scene? And we both had this like deer in the headlights expression in that corridor. And it was like really late in the night and we had to start to shoot early in the morning. But this is again, another great collaborative space to build a character, right? Like you get on set to, in the next morning and you know, whoever knows Malayalam, you're really like, oh, yeah. Like, you're really like, yaar, kya karenge hum? Ke baat karte hai abhi. Like, we'll figure it out. And that's, again, the, the, the sort of space where it's like, we have to figure it out before the first shot is, uh, uh, you know, taken. We have to be on the same page. And uh, that was not done alone. The, the, uh, I know that virus uh, created quite a stir when it had come out. It, uh, you know, it, uh, so rightfully and deservedly, uh, sort of put a lot of people on the map, you know, uh, in, uh, I mean, you were already, uh, uh, you were already very established and uh, have a cult following and also with Karib Karib single coming out, I mean, there's a lot of recognition uh, that yeah. people have as far as you're concerned, but then Ashik and your other collaborators got, a, got their time in the sun, which was great. But with the pandemic, you know, uh, virus, uh, uh, assumed a completely different, uh, you know, sort of status. And yeah. also with the kind of fine job that Kerala has done in, uh, you know, sort of because they, that was a state that had to do this before the whole country went into this with the Nipah virus, yeah. which is what yeah. virus is all about. Now, what I wanted to find out was that, um, you know, what is exciting here is that we did speak about the fact that how do you create characters that you don't have a reference point to or are a figment of somebody's imagination or characters that you can identify with, res find resonance with, but you still want to create their life. But then you've also played characters that exist. Yeah. That are there. Uh, you know, that exactly. And, and the thing is that you can, what has been that process like? Like, do you meet them? Do you talk to them? Do you read about them? Because there's a living person in front of you that you can source from. Yeah, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, virus, it's a brilliant example to say. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sad because like, I mean, when, when the movie released and when the movie was made, like no one knew, right? Like a year later. And today, by the way, is the first year anniversary of Virus's release. Virus released yeah. on the 7th of June. And uh, I remember watching the film and um, coming out and we had a second show as well to attend. And I couldn't go watch it because I, it was so potent, this film. And so I was given the role of Dr. Anu. And this is based on a doctor who worked during the first Nipah at, um, you know, outbreak. Um, and she, she is a community medicine doctor. Now, I personally didn't know, as many people didn't know, what a community medicine doctor really is. And they are, eventually I, figure, I figured out through conversations with us, like they really look down upon in the medical community too. Like because uh, they're not clinical doctors, they don't like have an office and they don't treat uh, diseases immediately. But what they do um, is study how it spreads. So they are the actually key, uh, you know, uh, uh, players when it comes to, um, you know, this whole thing that we are now very aware of these words like index patient, incubation period, um, and, and charting out the, you know, the root map of a patient and all of that. So it was the first time within last year, um, again, from Uyere, I it was a, a day that I got before I became Dr. Pranu from Pallavi to Dr. Randu, it, it, it was the most <laughs> stressful time that I have had in my career because all I did is I went to the set and uh, they were already shooting and, and I just wanted to understand uh, what the set's energy is like. And we did our look test and I got the doctor's number and I went to meet her and I went to meet her in her house and, you know, just understood what her, you know, surroundings are like, her children, her husband. 
and she so generously shared all her notes with me you know and so i started taking pictures pictures of her hair clip to like her nails to like what kind of conversation she has with the children like everything i was lapping it up because also i was a little paranoid because i felt like i might not be a good student if i don't like i only have a day and then the next day she was sweet enough to come home and explain exactly how she even though she was not asked in the beginning she was asked to map out the characters like find out like who the index patient is that became her own curiosity now dr anu in the movie though has a certain attribute to her now the plaza conflict is obviously is a nipa virus outbreak and finding the index patient that is what the main plot line if we can just say in one thing uh but her internal struggle is also that she is someone who has a lot to give but she's also very nervous about her herself her self value has always been undermined so much and this is very personal for her right like she's someone who when she starts explaining she's she's a great storyteller but she will gulp and she has her palm sweating and you know she she, she is so good at her job but she hasn't yet assumed the confidence of of just you know owning the place so that was an interesting um characteristic to bring and along the script even when the main uh, uh, uh main theme or main main point of the scene would be the officials discussing um how to deal with the issue the writers always came to me and said hey in this scene maybe the officials have an arc of problem solving anu has an an, an added um for like thought in her head that do i belong here is this happening for real you know this is it's this is amusing because these are things that we feel right like i mean if i go to the oscars let's just say um <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> like i'm going to be so poised guys like i'm going to be you know got it but i'll be like my heart will be exploding right so this is a lot like for anu and i realized also very interestingly post anu that i am a lot like her it's just that i have mastered the art of calm on the outside that you guys no don't know this buckets of sweat that i shed you know so i realized that we all i mean i've always found ways to connect much later and i do believe that we are everyone you know i can easily be you like it goes again straight back to that thought that if i were in her place i really would have done the same thing uh so that's why it is and um, for for me playing a real character meant that i have a live version if they are generous enough to share that i can just imbibe and then use what the director and the writers would say ki okay this we can use in the film this may be too much of a distraction this is a little too much to do but this yes so then we can pick and choose and that was exciting to do for virus as well as the other film that i've done where i played a real life character called in the movie uh, where i played a character called kanjana mala was pretty much the same um, process yeah um parvati another thing which is very exciting about your career is and i want to know this um because uh, many times uh, you know actors and artists have spoken about screen time uh, yeah. and we speak about protagonists and we speak about you know exactly where uh, the character that one is playing is placed in the narrative now the thing is that uh, whereas you've had this journey uh, where you place central characters but then you've also had a journey where you play very strong uh, character uh, you know sort of uh, roles and how how does the prep and the investment um vary when you're the so called protagonist and when you're a character actor in one sentence i can say that my prep and my investment doesn't change one bit when it is the you know like the number of scenes does not um inform my prep time or the investment of it it's the same thing that you've heard me speak about for every single character except my understanding of the character's consequence in the larger narrative has to be a little more um you know i i think it has to be a bit more in the forefront for me because every time i come in and i perform let's say for example we are taking the character from bangalore days um sara uh RJ Sarah or um again another Anjali Menon film that I got to do was Kude where I played Sophie now primarily Bangalore days is about three cousins and uh, uh Kude is about Joshua and Jenny um it's about a brother and sister's character uh, uh, story but how does 
R.J. Sarah becomes of consequence in Arjun's life and how does Sophie uh, becomes of consequence in Joshua's life becomes a very, very important um, a plot line for me to hold on to because that always gives me a sense of not getting too lost and too indulgent in, in fitting everything into my performance, you know. Then, you know, there is that danger of like, huh, like I have 10 scenes, let me just like uh, bring all the aspect of her entirety, of her wholeness into these. And then it's just too much traffic and it's not doing any good to the larger narrative anymore. So first of all, no need to have such an insecurity is what I realized very early on because if I'm choosing a character, like a supporting character in a story, it's primarily because, I mean, it's a story that I genuinely believe in. Like the story, even if the protagonist is not played by me, it just is a story I feel must be said. And second of all, it's a writer and director, like Anjali is. Um, they, they usually, they make sure that the character the supporting characters are of consequence. Like if you remove that character from the larger narrative, then there is a big void. So that's also how I sometimes gauge uh, characters that come to me, which are not protagonists, is that if I remove this character that you're offering me, does that affect the plot line at all? Significantly. Uh, if not, then why do you have the character? Then I would actually, I would not dismiss the story, obviously, but I would like to understand that I'm not finding a consequence. Can you please inform me what I have missed? So Bangalore days is exactly like that, right? I mean, her, how to get both um, RJ Sarah and Sophie's arc in, in its entirety, in the given space, is a collaboration, uh, oh my God, to die for. Especially with a director like Anjali, with whom I've had the chance to, you know, uh, collaborate like that. I mean, it's the same process. Like, Kude was shot in November and I think October, uh, or first week of October when they were doing recce and prep, I went to Uti and I just like stayed for two days and we just had long conversations and food and like just talking about Sophie. What did she do when this happened? I mean, and these characters have all gone through their own like major trauma. We And the first thing I remember Anjali, Anjali never spoke of, by the way, I, uh, Sarah as a supporting character. Like, when she speaks to an actor, it's always, I've seen that she takes, like, she's speaking as if the story is about your character. So there is a fullness to it. You never feel like sort of short change that your presence is not that important. So the character is not that important. And I feel like um, RJ Sarah is a paraplegic and she's gone through a, a disease and like, you know, she's unable to work. But, I, you know, that's another thing we... I, I, the first thing, in fact, Anjali told me is that that's not the first thing anybody should notice about Sarah. And that's our, our, our job to do. Our job is that the first thing that we see is her smile, her personality. And that's something that she has made sure will happen. Who, Sarah, in her life, she's made sure that no, if, if she's seen as a disabled person, that's their disability. It's not her doing anymore. And then in Kure, Sophie again goes through domestic abuse and how she comes out of it. When you see it's Joshua and Jenny's story, but you still see... Uh, Sophie also has a beautiful arc, beginning and an end and a closure. So, yeah. Parvati, I'm going to break format a little bit, but I think, um, you know, this speaks to uh, your, uh, you know, sort of method as an actor. So I'm going to break format and kind of take in a question here. This is also a question that uh, Sudhir Tandon, who's watching uh, the FB live right now, uh, has to ask, but Akhila Kumaran right now, if Akhila can ask this question herself to Parvati, it would be great. Hi, Parvati. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, uh, in, in the process that you are uh, talking about, where does uh, spontaneity come in? And how do you both, uh, okay, I think I'll stop it there. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so... so yeah, tell me. Parvati, this is exactly what Sudhir is asking. I mean, a little bit. He's saying that you're making all these preparations for the character. You're getting into, uh, you know, living uh, in that world. So with all of this method, where does spontaneity, does it get lost? Okay, so I, like I said, I had to learn it the hard way. It's the first few um, films that I did where I struggled personally because I realized that the, the, the prep that I was doing was building more walls because I was not keeping it loose. And, and uh, 
uh, and ready to let that also fall away if required. So I I started focusing on see if I I am by nature a person who um, functions better when I have information. Um, wow. So I, I do, you know, hoard information a lot. But then it was about making sure that that becomes a, let's say, a tool for me or a weapon for me than it in becoming intimidating, uh, my performance. And uh, that I could acquire only over a period of time where when the execution happens, I don't sit there like <laughs> on set and uh, read out, this is what she did the previous day. This is what she ate that morning. You know, so no, I, I can't wear this clothes because, you know, she's put on two kilos in the last two weeks. Like, I mean, you know, and uh, like these are all notes which inform certain aspect of her backstory. And that becomes so lush and, um, uh, and, and heavy that when I go on set, I let it lose. Then I have to just trust the fact that it will seep out and come through me in my performance when I'm just being her. And see, I also have worked with actors who don't do any of this, come and perform and go. And that seemed to work absolutely well for, for them. And I've had great time working with actors who don't have to think about wearing the same inner wear as you know, the character does. But that helps me get into a space which is not me. Because if I have the inclination of getting stuck about what Parvati thinks, because by nature I can get stuck there, then I will do all that it takes to move Parvati out for a little bit. So all this prep only helps me in that aspect. But then I let things loose and never cling, as I said in the beginning of our sessions, like I never cling to the or invest too much in the prep part of it. Hello, Parvati. Firstly, it's like a dream come true. <laughs> and uh, hello. So my question really is, what is the kind of work? Because I know that you're a very socially responsible person. What is the kind of work that you do on yourself personally to be able to be so malleable and to keep shape shifting so often? What is the kind of work you do on yourself? That's, that's, that's my question. Um, Okay, so try and stay healthy. For me, um, physical, see, I, um, simply put, it's like my camera, like for a cameraman, there is a camera and the lens and my camera would be my body. The first one to address is the first one you see and it's not to do with how it looks, but can I uh, expand, shrink it and make it different for a character? Do I have enough stamina and health to go through a rigorous day of shoot to provide all the energy? Do I have that? Do I have that personal discipline when I have started shoot where everything else is put aside and I don't indulge in that, I don't get distracted? That I do for sure. Um, literally quite everything else stops. And I think like my friends, my family, they're all very used to the fact that like once a shoot starts, they don't really see me until it's over. Like they do get snippets of me of how I'm doing and all that. So there's a certain kind of cutoff that really helps me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, mentally, of course, like it's in all the reading that I do. It's in all the regurgitating of it and writing of it that I do. So I don't like hold it in my head. I always like put it out all these thoughts are out on a paper and the moment it's out of my head, I'm not carrying it in my head anymore. Mm -hmm. So this is a constant process, even when I'm not quote unquote working, mm -hmm. like working doesn't only happen for me on a film set. Like it's also happening right now. Like I am preparing for a part that I have not signed up yet, but I need to be ready for it. And this has been my journey for all my career because I never knew where work would come from as most actors would relate to. Uh, but your physical system and your mental system needs to be pliable enough uh, to do that. So I do that for sure. For me, in all the silence and the travel that I do, uh, these are all ways of keeping these muscles like, you know, uh, ready to go. But wherever, whichever shape it needs to fit into. My question is, uh Many times it so happens that whenever a person is acting, the uh, on the back of their mind, they have the effect of that shot of that scene, what it will bring in context to the film. So maybe whenever the lenses are changed, uh, what I mean is when a close-up shot is set, they do something different. And when a master shot is set, their body language is somewhat different. So 
can I ask Parvati what is her method in uh, context to how the lens is set when she is performing a scene? Thank you. Hey, thanks, Saman. That's a brilliant question because it's so specific when it comes to execution on set, right? Um, so I've not done a lot of theatre, uh, but I've done theatre workshops where, I mean, the certain throw of your voice and the use of your hands and your legs and everything is is used all the time. And but I actually, when I started off, I was so rigid in my in my structure. But if it's a close shot, only this part functioned. You know, the rest of it was just like a flailing, like a stand for the head or something. <laughs> uh, so that that was a that was again like I mean I learned on the job. I I did not go to a film school. I did not go to an acting school for a very very long time. I hadn't done an acting workshop, so I had to learn on the job that. So then what I do is like if I, for example, I'm holding a cup and I'm, 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 I'm here, but you can't see the cup. Like for during performance, I can very easily leave the cup aside and just act like I'm holding the cup, right? You can't see that I'm not holding the cup. But I'd rather, because the cup has a certain weight that informs the tension on my neck. Like for me, then that all gets connected and then that becomes a truthful truthful performance for me because even this aspect of this strained muscle around my neck because my shoulder and my arm is holding this cup um, also affects the characters, you know, uh, how they how they see, the, how see their line or how they are responding to a line. Like how their physicality then translates to the tension that they are feeling to the audience. So I start doing this thing where like regardless of it is, you know, the set department people are so amazing. They usually come and they say that, man, it's close up scene. You can keep the bag down, you know, because the bag is heavy. And I'll be like, I'm thank you, but I'd rather hold it. And they all initially they used to have like this wrong with her kind of an expression. And you know, oh method. You know, they do that also <laughs> and go away. But uh, for me, it, it, it makes actually, um, eventually it's worked better in my favor for my performance to not worry too much about uh, in terms of holding things, right, for the character. Another aspect he mentioned was facial expressions. That is definitely something that I have, I can't say I have a particular pattern on, or, a, or an equation that I apply, but I do know that if it's a long shot, I don't exaggerate an expression unless the director and the people who are seeing it through the viewfinder are saying that it's not getting communicated. Maybe we need to change the angle a little. Maybe we need to put an extra light there. Or maybe you need to do something else to communicate this aspect because we do need a long shot, but we can't come this close to show what you're feeling. So then I perform accordingly. And other, other, other than that, I try to keep it as real as it is on a close-up shot is what you get on a long shot. But then it changes from, from performance to performance and director to director. So my question is, uh, you spoke about fantasy characters and characters that are rather um, unfamiliar to the audience, say the ones that probably come in uh, movies like thrillers or something. And you spoke about how everything builds up the backstory of the character. So how is it that you leave a trail for such you know, intense characters without giving away their story, but uh, which are evident enough for people who are not, um, say, film critics and don't look so deeply into the movie. How do you make it so evident to a layman that they're, they're more curious about why they're doing it instead of blaming everything on their backstory? Got it. Um, brilliant question, Quaish, and might I add beautiful name. Uh, it's just this thing where I, I spoke about when I started speaking about the prep part of it, the, the, the amount of information that comes in terms of backstory and research is something that then you imbibe um, in terms of nuances when you perform, right? Like when you're reading a scene, while you're working it out with a co-actor and with a director too, but when you're reading a scene, there are actions that you, you figure out a character is, is doing in that scene. And what is their relation with a particular thing or a person in that scene can say a lot. Maybe that is not the primary objective of that scene. The primary objective could be something else altogether. But the way they handle that particular item or speak or dismiss another character can be from the backstory of the fact that she's never enjoyed speaking to a man who is dismissive of her. So she's not going to make eye contact. 
so something will inform the audience that she doesn't seem comfortable with him even though she hasn't worded it out even though the scene is about something else like it's in the fact that you know let's say she has a really bad relationship with her mother and her mother is constantly telling her what to do you know pull up your shirt stand straight close your legs you know maybe the mother is doing all that you know not in the scene but the fact that her mother is there kind of scrunches her up it's in her body language right so what comes without saying is that her relation with the two characters in the scene gets uh, communicated through the performance in relation spatial relation to the the one character whereas the main drama is happening with another character standing in front of you with whom you're speaking and it's also interesting because this person's presence or this particular back story's presence is also going to start affecting your dynamic with this the other one the main one that's happening so that's just one example i've just kind of put put together um and back story can be brought in in performance in in nuances a lot and i tend to ask my directors about is is there any action or something that comes naturally to me in a performance does that disturb the the bigger scene because it's not that i i'm thinking back story mein wo hua tha mujhe wo yahan plug karna hai to main karti hu like you know that may not come it's the, just that it organically seeps in in her in her behavior with a particular item of clothing or a person and suddenly i'm like oh, maybe this is how she respond to uh that and i want to ask the director or the writer will that this affect your larger perspective they'll be like no please go ahead that has nothing to do with this and does not disturb the main plot line at all then i do it if not then i try to curb the urge of filling in all that i know into that space so always that was with me <laughs> hi bharati Hi Shweta, how are you? Yeah, all good, all good. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to say a little thing. I uh, live abroad, so for me, the connection I have to India is through movies. So, I'm really thankful that uh, the identity of Malayalam cinema, in particular, because you know, the, like if if like for my non-Indian friends, the identity has always been for Bollywood, Shah Rukh Khan, Amitabh Bachchan. We're talking about old movies. We're talking about classics. Then, then comes a movie. after probably say i got connected to malayalam movies after bangalore days because the initial movies i see were all about punch dialogues and action sequences and all of that and then there's there's this whole transition that's happened and i'm really thankful that there are people like you who are the spearheaders for such an you know such a change in the industry and i'm really really thankful so my question to you is very um, it's a little long but i i think i should uh, say that you mentioned that in charlie uh, you meet as as in when you meet a different character in the movie you find out about charlie charlie is a mystery to you you've never met this person you transition when you meet from person to person but in ka- in ingan in the movie uh, you played kanjanamala you are of course you, it's a biopic you are mirroring a character that exists it still exists and some nuances you take from the character but it's 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 a 70 30 kind of a thing you put you put in your 70% right so uh, you're talking about 22 years of her life she's spent in confinement and she transitions from a medical student who stands up for the underdogs and uh, then she's the darling of the house and the even the house help and everyone just loves her adores her and then she spends 22 years in confinement because of her orthodox family just because she wanted muidin in her life okay and then she molds herself into becoming muidin's other half right so there's an amount of transition you see the kind of character prep you said that you know you you like go into the detailing but we're talking about 22 years here so that's literally you know a, an entire chunk of adulthood how do you prep for such a character like that you know um so first of all um the director and the writer um had incredible amount of literature on the subject okay like i honestly in this one i didn't have to go beyond anything they took me to meet kanjanamala they made everything happen i met moidin's brother um you know i spoke to um you know the different departments and i i'm not kidding you uh, the script were five books 
it's not it was just not one file of acts like a one book thing it was five books so the, it was so well detailed and picturesque and every short division was also part of the script like it was very detailed so uh, what i went with is that it's the idea that love the love surpasses death like how does one live with a love that doesn't come with the notion of a completion in terms of being with that person right i mean the person is no more how do you still continue and become your own person so kanjana mala for me when i met her and i spoke to her uh, they had these letters that they had cre- that they had uh, written to each other in code they created a whole code between each other and um, you know found a way to get the letters to each other and all that for 22 years what also surprised me is that we in general in human nature we tend to get used to certain things like we know that i mean it's i mean it's 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 hard to say i mean people do end up doing really crazy and uh, you know self harm sort of things when when the, their hearts are broken but then there is a certain rigor with which kanjana mala and moedin had decided if not now at some point we're going to be together until then we will be okay with this they tried every single way they could have tried they got beat up they got you know like arrested in the room and they couldn't move they couldn't eat but uh there was a certain acceptance also a certain grace is what she had called it uh which i personally as parvati has no patience to understand right like i mean my life tell me if i'm put in such a situation i wouldn't know how to perform that but it's the faith that a person has actually gone through that and recounting her story in what all did she did in her you know in her free time you know in her confined time like what did she do what are the books she read what are the letters what are the conversations she had yeah. because even even if they were far apart they were together they were talking about politics about geography about literature they were writing letters not about i miss you i love you only they were living a life in 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 sort of a companionship that they shared and that was a massive um i mean that literature especially had helped me in terms of how to perform in scenes which which finally start showing the change in time you know um in malayalam there is a word irutham Mm-hmm. it's like a settling in that happens uh, mm-hmm. after a period of time you live with grief a certain way and mm-hmm. it was for me to find what what was her irtham what where did she find that little you know a cocoon and a cushion where she would patiently wait hey parvati hi um, hello nice to see you nice to see you too so um in a recent interview i think it was a film companion one you mentioned um about you know wishing to work with geetu it was in the context of muton and the performances in muton nevin and roshan um and you mentioned something about um rearranging yourself and uh, i'm curious to and firstly thanks so much for giving all of us insight into your pro- method and process um <laughs> but uh, in that context what do you wish to learn or um how do you think that changing your method or um influencing your process and you also mentioned about some of the feedback that you got so it's in that yeah. context yeah oh yeah absolutely because um see first of all let me tell everybody that vaishak by the way smriti was in that clip that we decided in virus he was one of the oh. uh, characters in virus um, one of the officers from national health commission who says how did you get to know this information and you know uh, was the uh, dr anu explains so i worked with him so hello fellow actor uh, i you know i am always in need to break mold like one certain things i have now come into terms with is the fact that i will always seek information i will always ask for these things because i'm used to it now it's if i had started off with a different director or a different team which worked in a whole another loose manner i probably would have would have structured myself differently so because i've worked and learned on the job this is something that i have been priming and like you know perfecting and you know kneading and to like a really good dough and it's been working out well for me and my performances so far but i'm moving but mm, geetu and uh, rajiv ravi and um, to a really great extent ashik abu um it's a lot of directors who actually say that they, they may not even have a script on their hand or they actually may even tell me do not think 
you do no work. You just come to the set. Okay, do you trust the story? Just come. I'm waiting to have such an opportunity to work because, you see, these things work well in my head, but if that can be deconstructed and this process can shape shift into a whole other thing, then I almost feel invincible. I don't know. That's why they keep it from me. <laughs> that kind of a power that an actor should have. Uh, but I'm also all about gloriously failing because the, this particular, all these things that I have done has not always worked also. Like it has always, it has also put me in, in problematic positions where uh, I'm too much up in my head, but more often than not, it has worked out for me. So now when I see, when I hear um, Geetu work with uh, Nive in a certain way or Rajiv Ravi, the way he worked in Unnamed Rasulam with uh, Fahad and Andrea, I- I'm dying to work in such. So I- I'm hoping that I get an opportunity to do that because it-, it really is about that safe space and trust I spoke about too. Like the moment I trust a creator, then I am a moldable clay in their hand. Now you do what you have to do with me. I, I will always walk away a winner from that. Hi, Parvati. Uh, Bamshi Hi. here. Hi. Uh, so, my question is, earlier, I mean, earlier and now, we talked about your um, your relationship with the director. So, uh, I feel it's quite complex because um, you, I mean, Martin Prakart came, approached you, stating that, uh, please don't ask me any questions. Um, okay, now let's think that, uh, you know, I, as a young debutant director, is approaching you with a script and you obviously wouldn't expect me to say such a thing. So, uh, and even if, uh, even if I'm, a, uh, even though I am a young um, director coming up to you, would you be, uh, what would you be looking into? Is it, uh, you know, is it my previous work? Is it my, uh, is it my short films or my qualifications where, where I graduated from or how, how is it? Thanks, Vamshi. That's a really brilliant question because I, I have, I continue to meet with a lot of debutant directors. I do. Mm-hmm. And I don't get to work with all of them. And I have worked with first-time directors also, like Bimal, by the way, Nuganda mm-hmm. Moedi was a first feature. He's made documentary yeah. before. And it was a massive project to take on, a massive character to take on. And where did that, that leap of faith come in? Is in the initial meetings. So for me, I, for what works for me, if I meet you and we have a conversation, let's say, however long you want the narration to be. If you tell me, I, I can only give you a synopsis and I can work on the script and come back to you. Good. Just have to sincerely communicate with me why you want to make the film. Why this story? Why is it important to you? Because I'm here to only add to that. I'm not here to take it and make it mine, right? So unless and until I know what is driving you to make the film, I don't know how I can be a good tool to add and embellish it. How can I can be a good ally to you? So discussions have gone different ways with new new directors um some people like tell me a whole narration they have a short by short narration sometimes it takes about two two and a half hours and then there's another one and a half hours where i ask them questions some of them have not done well with narration then they come ahead and tell me i'm not good with narration i just want to say that i think i digress too much so would you just mind reading it and i think i would say yes to it so a- any kind of uh just trying to connect with me as an actor to say that this is a project that I genuinely wish to make. And all I need to know is that if I can find that one tar to connect with, where I can now then, then uh, provide you with that service to make that a reality. That's all I look for. Be it a veteran director or otherwise. Like I have, I have also met veteran directors um, with whom I would love to work at a future time, sure. When they tell the story, the story has no connection or their intention of the making a film has no connection. But their talent, I'm very excited to work with eventually. But that particular story may not have made us. So now do, what, do I, what do I do? Or do I just do it because it's such a big director? Should I just not work with that person? I think then I would be lying to that director. I'd be lying to the project. That'd be a very selfish and a, a very one-sided approach. And sooner or later, I'll be caught is what I feel. I'll be caught with my lie as well because I won't be giving my hundred percent. So, so is it like that, a no right away or is it, is it like, Oh yeah, that's around? very interesting. Like as crazy as it can get is usually after a sleep, a good night's sleep. Okay. Okay. I'll be like, adios. I'll, <laughs> I'll tomorrow morning. 
I literally take the sleep on it business, you know. Um, there are movies that I have said that, guys, I'm very, I'm leaning into it too a lot. I feel it's a yes, but I'll call you tomorrow morning because more, you know, when I wake up, the first thing, if I don't even remember, I've had a meeting the previous night. You know, it it hasn't stayed, and if it is nagging and if it's asking more questions, I know I need to have another meeting with them, and if it's coming up in the sense that I need to know about this character more, man, when can I start working? I know it's a yes. Some movies for sure, I would know right then that I don't think we'll gel together. Thank you, another time. Ah, uh, Parvati, there's a question uh, from someone who's watching Prithvi Raj, who's watching ah, uh, who's watching the Facebook Live right now, who wants to know that we hear you're preparing for your directorial debut. Ah, uh, can you share a few female filmmakers or films that inspired you to take the step as a filmmaker? See, I've worked with. Vijay Lakshmi Singh in Kannada. She was the first female director that I worked with, and uh, then I worked with Tanuja and I worked with Anjali, and I have my my shift to want to direct. Honestly, was not from the you know from the experience of having worked with female directors. It had nothing to do with that. I mean, for the, for me. Every single time I work as a director, they are just a director, and they all bring different skill set and understanding and empathetic views or lack of it. You know, that can there is no gender roles that I apply when I when I get to you know choose which director to work with. Um, my shift happened purely because I had started looking at storytelling. I had started understanding and enjoying storytelling. Also, as much as performance. See, I am primarily a performer. I think I'll for a very long time I'll only be a performer. I think that is a way that I process information in my body, process emotions in my body, is to perform it out through a character or myself. Um, uh, but uh, when I started reading scripts, at one point, um, I started seeing the story. I started seeing how it would pan out. I started discussing. if we had done it this way what information would go out about the character those things about the making of a film started exciting me also not while i'm performing but apart from that so then i started understanding that okay this is definitely exciting me when somebody is telling me a story i have an image um a visual grammar coming to me of how i would visualize it and that became more and more clear as the years you know passed by that's the only reason i realized that okay let me make a story let me tell it my way uh, but honestly that has i have great respect for all filmmakers and the more and more female filmmakers the better uh, but this was why the shift or the decision was there this performance came from that space where i couldn't hold it in anymore and now i feel the need to tell a story fail gloriously if i need be but uh, that need has to come out of my body for sure You know, uh, we've got Anu Singh Chaudhary here. Anu's uh, Anu's a screenwriter. She's also an author, and uh, her um, I won't call it her first because she's done a lot of work before this. But we just uh, Ram Madhani, uh, Ram Madhani, who's a director, his uh, web series, uh, the trailer for that Arya just dropped, and that's uh, writ- written by Anu Singh Chaudhary. So uh, you know, now that we've um, we've heard from you in such great detail the process of an actor and the kind of things that the actor uh, you know looks to cling to or looks to see uh, to create their world so that they can do a better job i just wanted to ask anu since she's a writer as to what is her take away from this session thank you so much parvati i can't tell you how useful this has been and so many insights i was i was like really taking cop- copious notes and i Uh, i know for sure that this will really enrich some of the these these learnings are going to be very very helpful the one take away that uh, so you know i've always grappled this was like smriti rightly said i i am actually quite new to screen writing so the one thing that i would often wonder would be that when you are actually creating a character in your head as a writer and with a director then you're doing you're visualizing the character in a certain way and then you're you know writing it in, writing the character in a certain way how 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 much of you know how much of the personality of a performer begins to affect that and then what happens if the character which is your brain child goes out in the wrong hands so as a writer that has been a big fear for me 
but then now you know i hear from a performer like you who completely owns owns the character which happens to be i mean for me it because it has it was when i was writing these first first few series in the film that i'm working on incidentally with tanuja uh it, it, i would always like you know get uh, i would lose my <laughs> my sleep over the fact that okay i am visualizing it in a certain way but what happens if the character completely the performer completely messes it up so now the two things that i have understood is that at at a certain point the trust factor that you talked about at a certain at a certain point you have to entrust the collaborator the person you're collaborating with and completely let go because it is not yours it is it becomes the entire teams and it becomes the performers as much as it was your brain child that was my biggest takeaway the second thing yeah. that i have learned is that you must as a writer be prepared with the hows and whens and what because these are the most critical uh components which will inform the performer and therefore will make an for make for an engaging story so these were the two biggest insights that i have got thank you so much for this thank you anu thank you anu uh, parvati any uh, you know parting thoughts uh, because you've just uh, this has been brilliant it's been such a learning experience for me and we've got such a incredible room today Uh, of people who are watching uh, on facebook and people who are right here who have asked some brilliant questions anything that you would like to say before we wrap up the session how oh, um, anu first of all let me just uh, thank her and all the best uh, the trailers dropped i can't wait to see it and uh, please continue writing uh, i just feel like um this is been an incredible opportunity of revision for me like this doesn't mean that i went to every nook and cranny and usually i i do not go back and watch my own performances it's hashtag cringe for me because i can only find faults the cliche right but i was genuinely interested in study this time because i understand what mommy is bringing to the table is a space of conversation and study that is very much missing from our you know from our like general space on online like we have two people talking which is we just do not have because of the pandemic we can use it to the to our benefit to have these conversations and i personally benefited from basan's um session as well so this is the time to be a student like for me to go back to being and i've said this several times to smriti too it's about in any way possible not like if not like this hardcore into the book kind of a person but at any point if you can be back to the student self it's going to pay back when the world is like reshifted and the new normals come to us so as an actor this process of going through each and every character of mine and understanding which example would amplify which part was personally a uh, beneficial for me and it's an honor to share it with all you people who have so patiently listened to me for 2 hours oh my god uh but my friends don't listen to me for 2 hours guys so i am very happy that uh, you all listened and you all joined in but parvati seriously thank you for giving so much of time thank you for everyone uh, for plugging in our next session is a session uh, next sunday uh, with shakun batra uh, can we have the creative please of the session uh this is what it is it's blocking and camera movement to find the rhythm of a scene uh so if you want to join in please write to us if you want your friends to join in write to us we are going to be doing uh two sessions or at least one session a week um you know going forward till the time people are interested in cinema and till the time we survive <laughs> so thank you so much and parvati seriously can't thank you enough for this kind of detail that you brought to the session i think this is going to become a benchmark for things that we do going forward uh and um, never never worry about brevity because i think brevity is uh, overrated these days um Okay. So thank you guys and thanks for plugging in and give your feedback let us know uh if we can improve something let us know what you would like to hear about we would love to bring you new things new nuances specific topics anything that you want uh we'd love to do that love to hear from you thank you